Jesus. Good evening. This is Elder Parker of Oakwood Church of God in Christ, 4712 North Albury Road, Godfrey, Illinois, where Pastor Andre Reed is the pastor. I want to thank you for tuning in to our service this evening. We consider it a privilege to have you with us. If you're ever in the Alton Godfrey area and are looking for a Bible-based church, please stop by Oakwood Church of God in Christ, where the Oakwood Love Family will make you feel right at home. First, I want to give honor to God tonight, who's the head of my life. I want to give honor to my pastor, Pastor Andre Reed, to Mother Reed, to all the elders, missionaries, evangelists, in the in this evening's service. I want to thank God for you being here. I thank God for being here to have the privilege to be in front of you. Saints, there is a word tonight. And it's coming from the scripture from the book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. And it reads, I am confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. And that was in the modern English trans translation. Thanks tonight, I wanna to talk to you. And the subject of my story is, this is my story. For each and one of you this evening under the sound of my voice, if you will admit that you are a work in progress. Now, you know what? I'm not all that I ought to be, but thank God, I'm not what I used to be. Saints, I'm still under construction. But in the text, Paul greets these Philippian believers with a prayer of thanksgiving. He is thankful upon the slightest remembrance of them. These people who have proven to be a very special blessing to Paul in his ministry and in the gospel. Paul takes the time to tell them how much he appreciates their friendship. He appreciates how they have ministered to him. They sent an offering to him. They met his needs. So he writes to them a thank you note to tell them how much he appreciates having them in his life. Saints, you know, sometimes it's important to let people know when they have been a blessing to you. Don't delay. If there is someone who has shown you a kindness, someone who has meant as much in your spiritual journey, somebody who has given you a helping hand, who has done something for you that they didn't have to do, somebody who has gone out of their way to be kind to you. You know what? You ought to say thank you to them Amen. while they can hear it. Amen. You know, some saints, I can remember when me and my wife were tarrying for the Holy Ghost. We'd be on the altar and Pastor Reed would have the saints tarry with us. And we all be saying, you know, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And just when you feel like your mind is right, where it's right where it's supposed to be, someone will come and whisper something into your ear or someone would bump into you and you feel like you're, you just lost your connection. But you know, I thank God for people like Sister Linda Thompson that had a way of knowing where to stand. She would be on the same accord with you you know, you felt supported. She left you with the right spirit. You know, but then there are those, there are those when you would go to the altar and while you would receive a blessing of the presence of the Lord, you didn't receive the fullness of the spirit. And then there would be people like Mother Reed who would know exactly what to tell you. So when you saw, you didn't walk away discouraged. Saints, you don't forget people like that. So I want to take a moment to thank these wonderful women of God. 
I want to tell them, thank you for making the difference in my journey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Amen. But in the text, Paul takes the time to write this letter to him. He says, every time I think about it, every time you run across my mind, every time I remember you, I give God thanks. I give God thanks for your labor and how much you work with me in the ministry. And then in verse six, he goes, Paul encourages them. He says, I am confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will perfect it, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Saints, you know, when we read the text, look at the confidence that belongs to the saints. Paul used a strong word that describes the hope that he has in Jesus Christ. The word confidence. He is exalting the fact that the saints can have an absolute assurance that they are saved without a doubt. Amen. He emphasizes that his certainty is grounded on God's magnificent sustaining power. Saints, the Bible literally overflows with verses that tells the believer that we can know for sure that we are saved. Saints, tonight, I am confident. But you know, I'm not confused. I'm not unsure. Saints, I am confident that he who has begun a good work will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm not guessing about my salvation. And if for some reason, I don't wake up in the morning, and when I do open my eyes, I know that I'm going to see Jesus Christ. All right. I know that there is a home waiting for me on the other side, because in John 14 and 2, he says, he has mansions for us waiting for us. But you know, since that's for me, it's okay for people to guess how old I am. You know, it's okay for people to guess how much I weigh, but I don't want them to guess about whether or not I've been born again. All right. Saints, we got to be confident. If God has been good to you, if God has opened doors for you, if God has made a way for you, if God has written your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, whatever it takes to express how glad you are, then you know that you are saved. If God has saved you, be confident that he who has begun a good work will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. All right. I don't know about you, but that's enough to shout about right here and now. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Saints, the Bible is literally running over with verses to give us confidence. I believe in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Whosoever believed that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And then we go along in 1 John chapter 5 and 13, it says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And then if you go down to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And then if you even go to Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Then in Romans chapter 8, in verse number 1, it says, 
There is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, Amen. to them who are the call Amen. according to his purpose. Amen. Saints, I am confident that he who has begun a good work will complete it until yes. the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. But you know what? I want to tell you a secret of mine. Saints, it's not my grip on God, but it's God's grip on me. All right. That makes the difference in my salvation. I am not confident in my goodness. I'm not confident in my character. I'm not confident in my history. I'm not confident in my ability to persevere. But you know what? I am confident in the power of God. All right. You know, I used to hear a I used to hear a, a, a hymn, one of my favorites, and it's called Blessed Assurance. And it goes something like this. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I am an heir of salvation, purchased by God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood, perfect submission, all is at rest. I am in my Savior, and I'm happy and blessed. I'm watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. All right. Saints, I am confident that he who has begun a good work will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I'm not confused about it. What I, what I know is that Christ died on the cross to set me free. And I am full of thank you this evening. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you for writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you for going to the cross. Saints, he died in our place. Yes. I want to I want to give him my best praise. I say thank you Jesus. I want to give him my best praise. Thank you. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Saints, I am confident that he who has begun a good work will complete it. Will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now saints, that's the confidence of the saints. But the confidence of the saints it's based on the commitment of the Savior. All right. In our text, it says, I am confident that he, Jesus, who has begun a good work in me, we all know what God did for us the day he saved us, the day he chose us. Saints, there is something about being chosen. The book of Jeremiah, I believe is in 31.3, says, I love you with the everlasting love. He chose us in Christ and prepared a savior for us. The very faith we need to trust in him, he provided. <clears throat> in Ephesians chapter two, verse eight and nine, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Okay. Not of works, least any man should boast. Our good works have not resulted in salvation, saints. But rather, our good works comes from our salvation. Now, let me break it down to you a little bit. You cannot work your way to heaven. You can never be good enough. You can't sing enough. You can't pray enough. You can't preach enough. Salvation is all grace. 
It is the gift of God, least any man should boast. Our good works, it don't save us. Right. Because we have been saved. But you know what's good about this thing? The same God that began this good work is able to perform it. All right. He will bring it to end. This God that we serve is able to complete it. He's able to accomplish it. And if we trust him, he will keep us until the day of redemption. He's faithful to his promises. And he's faithful to his purposes. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I believe in the says in Jude, Jude 1 and 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Saints, you know what? I can't testify for you. I can only be a witness for myself. But I need the Lord every day. Amen. I need him to keep my mind. I need him to keep my heart. I want the Lord to keep on working on me, a work in progress. I want each of you, under the sound of my voice, to keep praying for me, to be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Saints, this is my story. Pray for me. Amen. Amen. Glory. That's, Amen. that's all right. Amen. I never want to leave the service without, without giving everyone a chance to be saved. In Romans 10 and 9, it says, if we openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. If there's anybody out there who have been listening this evening, or if it, and that and that this service, this sermon has changed, has changed your life, has convicted you, or if you're just tired of the way you've been living and you're looking for something better, I invite you this evening to repeat after me. Lord, I come to you a willing vessel, confessing all of my sins. I receive you into my life and make you my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. I cancel every assignment of the enemy and I declare my life will never be the same again. Yes. Thank you, God. I am saved in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.